Welcome to this shortwave radio channel. And um, one question that came across uh, the Facebook group, and I think it's a question that um, I possibly have talked a little in the past. Um, and it's something that has to do with what we call dynamic range or high dynamic range. The question came because the U-loop antenna is meant for high dynamic range receivers. Uh, and this is, and they, they say SDR, but it's, it's really a receiver thing. It's not an SDR thing. So high dynamic range states or is a property of devices that receive radio signal. And every radio has a certain amount of dynamic range. Um, whatever radio it is, a portable, an SDR, a tabletop, a transceiver of some sort of amateur radio. Now, that dynamic range is not the same on every radio. Dynamic range varies a lot from the cheapest radios, which typically have rather low or bad dynamic range, to IN radios or transceivers that are thousands of dollars that usually have very good dynamic range or high dynamic range. Um, dynamic range mostly has to do with the gymnastics that the electronics can do when you're in a band and you've got some really strong signals and some weak signals mixed in and you're trying to listen to say a very weak signal next to a very powerful signal. The electronics in a radio need to be able to cope with that. And that will depend on, of course, the quality of the receiver itself. Typically, price talks in high dynamic range or dynamic range properties. So the cheapest portables will often have the worst dynamic range, meaning that receiving a strong or a weak signal next to a strong signal might be very difficult to impossible. Um, and, of course, depending on the tuning capabilities of the radio itself, where other receivers will actually cope very well, and you'll be able to listen to the weakest of signals next to powerhouse signals. Uh, this could be the case, for example, in medium wave. You're tuning around the medium wave band, uh, doing some DXing. Maybe what you'll want is that uh, the signal in the medium wave band if, for example, you see here, I've got a strong one on 1280, which is a local Montreal station. Well, maybe I would like to tune in a signal on 1270 right next to it. And, of course, I'll be using different capabilities, including maybe lower sideband to move away from 1280. Now, if I am able to listen clearly or very, quite well to a station so close to that powerhouse signal, well, usually that means that the radio will exhibit pretty good dynamic range. It's capable of, you know, receiving that powerful signal, but still ha having and maintaining the sensitivity required for that weak signal to be um, able to go through. Over time, there's been a lot of radios that had very mediocre dynamic range. One of them, uh, the Realistic DX302 that I owned for a long time, is one of them. And um, if you typically have a very powerful signal in a band, weak signals tend to be washed out by some uh, white noise created by the circuit. And this is, exhibits usually you know, bad dynamic range where the signals and the electronic circuits just can't cope with it. So that will be often one of the things that you can consider being higher and radios will have higher and better high dynamic range but you know what a lot of cheap radios exhibit excellent dynamic range also but uh, think about it as being really simply how well can you receive a weak signal next to a very powerful signal uh, and that will pretty much resume the high dynamic range or the dynamic range of a res radio receiver if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching